Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie, if you're new to my channel, and welcome to Beauty with a Purpose. So today, we have another Jesus chat. Anyways, maybe I should start doing that at the beginning of my Jesus chats, like just sing it. That's funny. Anyway, <laughs> so today it's going to be judging fruits. What are fruits? How do we get these fruits? How can, how can we tell if the others have good fruit or bad fruit? And so that's pretty much what we're going to go ahead and go through. And so I hope that you guys are appreciating me changing my shirt and headband every video <laughs> because I know it can get like, I'll be looking at my thumbnails and I'm like, why didn't you change Allie? Like, it looks like you just didn't care, give no effort. But in reality, I really record multiple videos in one day because I'm mom, I have two kids. You can hear them right now. I gave them food. So hopefully they'll be quiet for a little while. So anyways, so getting back into the reason for this video, judging fruits and what this means. So we're going to So we're going to go ahead and start in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Here we go. Here we go. Starting in 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, self-control. Against there, there, against, against such, there is no law. Oh. Okay. oh, man. Get away from me, Satan. So these are the good fruits. These are the qualities you will see in a person and in yourself whenever you are truly living for Christ, whenever you are truly seeking him. These are the things that he works on in on the inside of us. So when you're completely sold out to God, these are the qualities that you should have resemble. And these are the qualities that uh, someone that we are looking at should have or resemble. Okay, so how do we get these fruits? Starting in John 15, verses 1 through 27. So hang tight with me. And I'll break myself off. Like every time there's a new section in the Bible, I'll break off and sum up the last section. So for instance, verses 1 through 8 is titled the true vine. So then once I get to love and joy perfected, like I'll stop and sum up the true vine. So verses 15, 1 through 8 is I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. So it prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word, which means I have spoken to you, or because of the word, which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. But this is my father. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So first I wanna break down what the word abide means. And I wrote down, and so I wrote down a few different definitions and like so some of my favorites that really were like, whew. Okay, so the first scripture I wrote for is for a transitive verb, a transitive verb. And it's one of them is to endure without yielding. And this is for the word abide, to endure without yielding. And the second one I wrote down is to accept without objection. So an intransitive verb, and there have two, a uh, couple definitions for this. The first one is to remain stable or in a state. And number two is to continue in a place. And um, an, like if you change the, the way you say it, so to abide by means to conform to. So if we were to read this, it would say, continue in me and I in you as a, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it continues in the vine, neither can you unless you continue in me. So whenever you break it down like that, the only way we can blossom or bloom a uh, fruit is by abiding or continuing to stay or accepting without rejecting or objection is by allowing God to abide in us. So by staying rooted in God, 
or anything like that. So that's the only way that our fruits can blossom is whenever we are continuing to be one with God and his ways. Okay, so going on to on to verses verses 9 through 17. As the Father loved me, I also love you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The things I have spoken to you that may that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no love than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do whatever I command you, no longer no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you to love one another. So let's just take a look at that. So another way, because we're talking about judging people's fruits. And so fruits are also shown through actions. And it's so much more than love, joy, peace, kindness, long-suffering, um, self-control. It's so much more than those. Um, so this says you will love one another. So is somebody showing love? Are you showing love? Are you loving one another? Are you being forgiving? Um, and it's not forgiving to go back and just accept that person back into your life, but to forgive for yourself, to be able to move on from whatever hurt. Also, God just spoke something to me that friends, God says, whenever we abide in him and we're bearing his fruit, that we're friends with him. So are we friends with God? Can, can we tell that we're friends with God? And if we're judging somebody else, does it look like they're friends with God? Or are they just blaspheming God? Are they talking about God? They don't really want anything to do with God. That's how you can tell who's really walking this walk and talking the talk. Um, you know, is are they friends with God? Are they showing that love? Are they showing that compassion? Like what all are they showing? Okay, so going... And we're going to finish out this chapter, verses 18 through 25, 27. If the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world will love its own. Yet because you are not of this of the world, but I, cho but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works of which, I, which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened, so this happened that the world might be full might build that the word might be fulfilled which is written in in their law they hated me without cause but when the helper comes whom i shall send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from my father he will testify of me and you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning Whew. so the second half of this scripture is simple if someone is loved by the world they are of the world because we are to live like christ we are going to be rejected as he was so the same way the bible says to pick up and bear his cross that means that we are truly bearing his cross and the bible says that so that means the same way they persecuted christ the same way we're going to be persecuted so that's why when it comes to like lauren daigle and kanye west like it's very hard to me to believe that they're truly followers of god knowing the inner workings of the entertainment center and like just being enlightened on things like that is already like a red flag for me but seeing how the world loves them they're not ever rejected they're very loved well it says the world loves its own but because you are of christ the word the world hates you so that that that's a very big like self-reflecting moment is am i being loved by the world because if i'm being loved by the world then i'm not showing my love for christ enough i'm not living my life for christ enough because the world still loves me, which means I'm still of the world. And the same goes for somebody that you maybe 
considering whether you need them in their life, in your life or not, or whether you should be following them or not. Are they loved by the world? Because the Bible tells me right here that when they're loved by the world, they're of the world and they're not of Christ. Why? Because the world hated Christ because they did not know he who sent him. So the world hates us because Christ sent us and if they don't even know who sent Christ, then they hate us. Like that's just what it is. And so very big things. Next, we're going to go on to Matthew 13, or sorry, Matthew 7, 1 through 6. We had a lot of Matthew to go through. So three more scriptures, not three more verses, three more scriptures. So Matthew 7, verses 1 through 6. Matthew 7, 1 through 6. Judge not that you not be judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider this plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me re remove the speck from your own eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls to before swine, lest they trample them and under trample them under their feet and turn and turn and tear you in pieces. And so these next scriptures, I'm gonna read what God was telling me in the midst of it because I really don't feel like I should add or I might add, but I really don't feel like I should take away from what he was telling me in the moment as I was studying. So most Christians use this scripture to say we cannot and should not judge one another when this is actually telling us the opposite. The scripture simply states, we cannot judge someone on something we are struggling with ourselves, but to go and fix ourselves first, then to come back and help our neighbor. You know, and that's what a lot of people see help as these days is you could be like, oh, you know, like you really shouldn't do that. You know, you really shouldn't drink. You know, it's not good for you. Oh, well, you're judging me. No, I'm just literally trying to help your health. And within helping your health, it kind of helps your relationship with God. But I'm really trying to help your health. But a lot of people just see that as judging. And it's not judging. It's just it's help. And it's not. How can I say it? It's like. It's judging, but that word has become like so, what is the word that I'm looking for? It's judging, but that word has become so profane that people think of it as disgust. Like, okay, but like, I don't understand how, oh, I hate when I know what I want to say, but I can't put it in words. It's not judging. I mean, it's judging, but it's not judging the way the world now sees it. Then judging was to correct one another. The way the Bible talks about it is a form of correction. So how can I correct you on something that I don't even have correct in my own life? I can't do that. What God is telling me is to go and correct myself and allow God to correct me. Then I can help bring my brother or sister in Christ to correction. That's the way we can look at it. Okay, and so now we're going to read Matthew 7 verses 13 through 23. Enter by the narrow gate. For why does the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction and there are many who go go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life and there are few who find it beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravenous wolves you will know them by their fruits do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles even so every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of the Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have, you not have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, man who you who practice lawlessness. So in these scriptures, we are learning how to judge the fruits of others. Which path, do they, which path are they taking? Do they believe you can do whatever you want as long as you recite a couple scriptures and say you love Jesus? Well, newsflash, the devil knows scripture. Everybody who does evil says, I know and love Jesus, but they don't stop doing evil. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. God requires so much more. He requires obedience and sacrifice of ourselves. And so that's saying, so now with that being said, I'm just saying like, it says you have to judge others. 
you have to be able to look at somebody else and say, is this person really following God? Do I need this person in my life? Are they going to benefit or destruct my relationship with God? Now I say a broad path. Are you, when I say, are they doing whatever they want, but they say they love God and recite a couple, couple scriptures because uh, I say that because we live in a world where the world is trying to justify sin. But as long as you say, I know Jesus and I love him, it's okay, but that's not biblical. So you have to be very careful and articulate the words that people say. So for instance, I've heard like snippets of Kanye and he's never said, I've heard him say, if Jesus died for your sins, then you believe that, then you, then you know the gospel. Well, that's not the entire gospel. Jesus died for our sins, so we do not have to live in sin. That's the gospel. To know that we are free from sin, we don't have to dwell in a life of sin because the wages of sin are death. And so that's the gospel. So you have to listen and really articulate things and break them down and know your word. Um, God requires much more of us than just saying, oh, I love you. He requires obedience. In fact, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my command commandments. What does that mean? obey him obey his word obey his ways follow him and so we're gonna get into and another thing is it, it talks about fruit 15 through 20 and it says that a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit so i'm gonna read the next scriptures because i feel like that'll help me better explain that part so matthew 12 verses 33 through 7 37 i'm sorry 33 to 37 either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad for a tree is known by its fruit brood of vipers how can you bring how can you being evil speak good things for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things but i say to you that for every idle word man men may speak they will give accounts of it and in the day of judgment for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned so that helped me a lot better so a good tree can't bear good fruit a bad tree can't or a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad tree can't bear good fruit. Well, this helps us be able to break that down a little bit better. So what is coming out of a person's mouth? Like I just said, you have to be very careful and articulate their words. So you're either good or bad. There is no in between, even, even if you think otherwise. A good person will bring forth good things and a bad person will bring forth bad things. And they do this unintentionally. It's not that they're trying to do this. It's just unintentionally. It's, 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 um, it's just habit to them. They don't even realize that they're doing it. And they cannot bring forth the opposite of what they are. So a good thing cannot bring forth bad things. A good thing is just a good thing. And a bad thing is just a bad thing. There's no in between. You can't be good with a little bad. And you can't be bad with a little good. That's called lukewarm. And the Bible says that God will spew you out of his mouth if you choose to be lukewarm. So that means knowing his word, but still choosing to do the opposite. Or going to church and learning his word, but you're dabbling in a couple of sins here and there. That's being lukewarm. Um... I think, and it says like, you, it's, it's very easy to judge the fruits of others and of yourself because you have to listen to what's coming out of your mouth, what things are prospering in your life, or, or do you seem to just, that like bad things just constantly seem to like prosper in your life? Well, then maybe you're a bad tree. Um, maybe you're not bearing good fruit because you haven't fully sold out to God and followed in his ways. And, you know... You, it, within judging others you really have to judge yourself especially if you want to get to a place where you can correct others you have to really correct yourself and so i hope that this kind of helped you guys knowing what fruit is how to gain those fruits how to judge those fruits how to maintain those fruits and so i love you guys but always remember that jesus loves you more if you haven't already go ahead and give me a thumbs up also go ahead and hit that subscribe button i love you guys but i will see you in my next video bye Mwah.